Hi, darlings. Welcome to Coffee, Tea, or Labrish, where we either sip coffee, spill tea, or I labrish more people business. Today, I wanted to talk about Andre Leon Tari, who's been in the news most recently for having his situation occurring with this house where they said Andre had these people to buy this house for him because he ain't got no credit. Like 30 years ago. And now he's facing eviction. According to the word on the street and everywhere else, Andre Leon Tally was hobnobbing with these uh, <clears throat> types of people that he uh, hobnobs with. Because <laughs> you know he is so awesome, is he? With the, the intellectual and the infamous basket, the great art artist, they say, who just came up out of nowhere and was living on the streets, allegedly, and got picked up by Andy Warhol and made beautiful art with him and made a lot of money and then died at the age of 27. But here he is with Andre Leon Talley. Here's Naomi Campbell when Andre styled her as Scarlett O'Hara. These are some of the people that he has had the um, the luck and the uh, the infamy to be around. And Andre does like his people of the lighter persuasion. It's always been a beautiful man. He is here. He is with our wonderful Grace Jones out. He's always dancing and partying and enjoying the night on the town. So apparently, we're going to lavish a little bit today, honey, because Andre filed for bankruptcy like twice. I don't know. I think about it and I'm like, did somebody like encourage him like, hey, that's the quick way to like clear your credit or whatever, you know, in the world that he was in because you know how Black people, we don't really, uh, you know, file for bankruptcy like that. So I'm wondering, I'm like, did somebody encourage him to do that? He filed for bankruptcy like twice in the space of two years. And then he went on to not only file for bankruptcy, he couldn't use his credit and he didn't have enough credit to purchase a house. So he wanted to purchase a house. So, you know, he was, you know really tight with the likes of Carl Lagerfeld and, you know, Manola Planick. And, you know, here he is with uh, Carl Lagerfeld. I don't know. It's a beautiful photo shoot, but he just looks like the butler. I'm, I don't know. He looks like the driver to me. I, I'm not, I don't know. He looks like the hired help. He looks magnificently like the hired help. All right. Anyway, so, you know, Andre is out there with the likes of Manola Planick. He says, you know, he spent time with him at his country home here, there, and everywhere, doing all manners of things, you know, varnishing, lacquering his uh, Louis Vuitton um, luggage with uh, yacht varnish or some such thing, like things we have never heard about. And so, you know, Andre lived a, I would say, a very um, spirited life. He's Here he is with Anna Wintour and a crowd of the types of people he has always been with and around. Um, Anna Wintour and he were very close, they say. I don't think they were close at all. They just had a working relationship. Andre always looked kind of lonely in the middle of other people to me. Um, but, you know, who's to say? So here he is now with uh, Diana Ross dancing because he likes to dance. And here he is with Iman because he's always escorting and being with beautiful and wonderful and famous people. Here he is with Andy Warhol of all people. Andre went through um, all types of people. He was just at the top and the height and the pinnacle of everything. And he sounds like it. Okay. Now, 
Um, let's move on to uh, him being friends with Manola Blenick. He ended up, um, after being friends with Manola Blenick, he ended up moving forward and Manolo's employee, they were all friends. And he says, hey, you know, he wants to buy this home. He didn't have good credit. You know, he had two bankruptcies. You know, you just get a home with two bankruptcies on your credit. So he says he gives these people, you know, $120,000 as a down payment to a home. And they said that it was, you know, a security deposit. Um, in the paperwork that Andre filed with them, they put that he was paying rent or lease and he thought he was, you know, doing like a rent to own situation. The house cost a million dollars. He's paid them out a million dollars. He says, I don't know. We, I, you know, I definitely have to go into this and do more research as the case progresses. But it seems to me like after Andre wrote his book last year that released around like May 2020, talking about the chiffon mess that he had brought out into the middle of everything after he went to vote the um, Met Gala and um, he didn't even know he was fired, honey. He went to the Met Gala and he was supposed to do his usual, um, you know, commentary for the Met Ball. And honey, they had some YouTuber out there, you know, already working and he was surprised and he was shocked and he was embarrassed and he stormed off and he left and he hasn't spoken to Anna Wintour since. So, um, he said, Anna Wintour is cold as ice. She's an ice queen. Then he went on to say, you know, his book was a love letter to her where he was like, you know, spilling all, all the tea. And, um, I think that he alienated a lot of people when he did that. I think that that turned a lot of, you know, the fashion industry against him because who is going to stand out with you against the devil who wears Prada? (laughs) Anna Wintour is literally the devil who wears Prada. That book, that movie was written for her. She's the epitome of that character. And so if you have somebody like that, that's like mega boss, mega icy, mega queen, mega ice queen, you don't just like, you know, write a book and tell all in a memoir. And they're talking about, you know, under the shift and this and the shift and mess. Listen, Anna Wintour has been, you know, sort of protecting him for many years, along with the relationships that I believe he had. I believe that he was like, you know, these men, you know, they're boy toy a little. And, and that, you know, he would, you know, go around and in his pursuit of, you know, find the things, higher things and better things. He would, you know, be their friends and close to them and, you know, their confidence and share whatever it was that he could and they could and they did. And, you know, he took advantage of what it offered and he didn't, you know, he also speaks about in his book about saying that he never really had a relationship that he felt love or like a fulfilled relationship or even a sexual relationship. So he alludes to being an asexual being. And so that means that he probably never consummated any type of, you know, relationships and basically saying they were all platonic because he was, you know, um, molested and abused and all of the things that he went through and all of that trauma that led to him, you know, going through these things. So, um, I believe that he was a toy. I believe that the friendships that he had protected him for a while and also Anna protected him. Anna, you know, she tried to get him, you know, to go on a fat diet and things of that nature. Um, she sent him to fat rehab. Like she tried to help him because in that industry, you have to stay slim. You have to stay beautiful. You have to stay marketable. You have to stay attractive. You have to have your appeal forever. And Andre began to just spread. And I think that when, you know, Carl Lagerfeld or, you know, Carl Lagerfeld around the time that he passed away was when Carl began to, uh, when um, Andre began to get bigger because, you know, he was no longer being seen with these people and he was no longer being photographed with these people and, you know, life was changing and he no longer had to keep up. And I think that's what brought him to the weight that he is today. That's why he wears his capes and his his gowns and, 
you know, his, his delusions of grandeur um, are part of, you know, his whole big persona. But I think that he still has the potential to make money. I think that, you know, he can take this and turn it around. Um, you know, they say he was a type of gatekeeper and the way he talks is like very snooty and snotty and he talks like sometimes with a British accent, like, you know, those, you know, the British and you know, when they think they're better than others and you know, all this, like, you know, we are royalty and everything. He's placed himself over there with the British and left the American people over here. And we're looking at him like, Andre, remember us? (laughs) So it's like, um... I think that he has a way that he can market himself. I realize that he can hardly walk. I've seen um, videos where he is like needing help to come downstairs, like not high stairs, but just need help ambulating. I think that he has to do something about his weight. And I think that, you know, he can, you know, do some something like get in touch with somebody like there cannot be everybody in the industry has not turned their back on you. You would not be doing interviews. You would not be doing, you know, books. You would not be doing the things that you're doing right where he wrote that book is where, um, a protection was removed from him. And I believe that these people were friends with Anna and Anna called in a couple favors, let him know, you know, where he, you know, where he stands, who, who is the one that pulls the reins, who holds the strings. And as we can see, it was December, November, 2020, you know, a couple months after he wrote the book that they, you know, the, um, the Blenick employee decided that they're gonna, you know, take him now to court for eviction and try to get him out of this house that he's lived in for decades, that he's been paying for, for decades. Like, where do they do this? You're about to be 72 years old. I don't even know because I question whether or not he lives in the home. I I saw the uh, commercial and it seems like Andre does not live there because in the middle of the uh, commercial, they're sending for paintings. They're sending for pictures. They're like, he's like, oh, you know, this is me and you're on my front porch. And, you know, yet yeah, this is all you're going to get is the front porch. And I'm just like, oh, no, something's not right. But I definitely have to come back. I have to do my research. I have to follow this case and I have to let y'all know all about it. All right. So once again, you've been here with Mona in Defatigable Heights. And this is Coffee, Tea, or Labrish, honey, where we sip coffee, we spill the tea, or we labrish both people business. And if you like what you've seen, I would love for you to reach down there and hit the subscribe button and come back for more. Okay. Bye.